Who is Art Benjamin, the math magician? I'm a professor at Harvey Mudd College. That's his day job, but under the cover of night, weekends, and, well, I guess some afternoons as well, he marvels audiences with his feats of mental mathematics. Performing for both the common people and well-known celebrities, Art performs about 100 shows every year and usually closes by squaring a five-digit number in his head. But here we go. I'll start the problem in the middle with 53 times 697. 697 is 700 minus 3. I'll take advantage of that. Now 700 times 53 is 37,100 minus 159 is 36,941. 36,941, 2 billion. Take the 809, add that to gum. I think there's going to be a carry, so I'll take 810 plus 73 is 883 million. 5 and 5 and. Okay, finally we do 697 squared. That's 700 times 694 plus 3 squared. It's 485 5,809 fizz up if I needed fizz up. Take the 485, add that to 5 and, oh boy, to get uh, 367,809. Yes, good. Thank you very much. So how does Art do all of this in his head? Does he have any special abilities? I don't have, I don't think I have what you might call some sort of savant syndrome where these numbers just instantly appear and I have no way of knowing where they're coming from. Think of it more like um, as if you just watched me juggle five balls or something. Nobody's born with the ability to do that um, and it doesn't just happen spontaneously. It's, it's the result of a lot of practice and um, uh, for me a very enjoyable amount of practice. How did you get started in doing mental math? Oh, it was, yeah, well, there was certainly a time, like, when I started, I could square two-digit numbers, and then for the added challenge, I'd work on doing three-digit numbers. I can even, I even have memories of practicing it. You know, we had a, um, I remember growing up, and we had in our basement this old pinball machine, and I remember, you know, while playing pinball, trying to square three digit numbers and and you know and getting the answer was so satisfying that I'd want to do it again and again um, and then I'd say well all right once I got good at that how about four digit numbers and and then I started running into some memory problems with that and I found a way to sort of fix that and um, I'll, I'll, the I ultimately the largest I, I can do um, once I understood my own processes better, would be to multiply two different six-digit numbers. Though the biggest I'll do in my shows is two five-digit numbers. Usually I square a five-digit number, but sometimes when I'm feeling ambitious and I have a sufficiently tolerant and uh, appreciative audience, I'll multiply two different five-digit numbers. But that, that's, a lot, that's a lot harder. Okay, let's go easy. How do you multiply two two-digit numbers so there are generally four methods that I use for multiplying, say, two-digit numbers. And in any problem, at least one of those, and often several of those methods will apply. The simplest method would be called the, the addition method. Uh, take a problem like um, 72 times 59. You could do 70 times 59. Let's see, 350 plus 63 is 413. So 4,130 plus 2 times 59, which is 118. Add those together from left to right to get 4,248. So it's really just the distributive law, but that's, um, that's what I'm doing. Or I could use the subtraction method, and so there I might use 59 as 60 minus 1. So I might do six, 60 times 72. Let's see, 6 times 72, 420 plus 12 is 432. So I have um, 4320 minus 1 times 72. Now how do I do that? Well, I know that's going to be 4200 and something. So I'll say that something, right? I'll say that 4200 right away. And then what's the difference between 20 and 72? Well, it's 52, but since it's being subtracted, I take the complement, which is 48. So that's 4248. The third method that I use is the, my, the one I prefer to use, it's easier on me mentally, is the factoring method. So if, I, if one of my numbers can be factored, say into one digit numbers, like 72, then I'll, I'll look at a problem like 59 times 72 and do 59 times 9 times 8. 
And 59 times 9, 450 plus 81 is 531, times 8 is 4248. And the third, fourth method that I do that I only can use it occasionally is when the numbers are very close together, and especially when they're squared. You know, that, that's, you can't get any closer than that. And then I have a really fast method for, for doing that. Let's see art computing squares on the stage. 78, great, next. 54, okay, next. 39, and one more. 23. What about harder multiplication problems? I'm going to try to square some three-digit numbers this time. I won't even write these down. I'll just call them out as they're called out to me. 242 squared is 58,564. 58,564, yes, good. Another, um, <clears throat> another three-digit number. Sir, a three-digit number. 523 is 273,529. 273529, yes, good. How about one, one last three digit number? Go ahead, three digit number. 965. 965 is 931,225. Thank you. Let me try to take this one step further. Going to try to square a four digit number this time. Three, six, seven, eight. This will take me a little bit of time, so bear with me. 13 million. 527,684. Good. Thank you very much. Where does memory play a role in doing mental math? I do all of my mental math from left to right. Uh, and one of the reasons for that, my original reason for that, was it would allow me to start to say my answer while I was still calculating the rest of the answer. You know, thereby making it look as if I had the answer right away. Because people, you know, the way we do math on paper, you, you, we're from right to left. You can't start to say your answer until you have the whole thing finished. So the fact that I'm starting to say the answer right away makes it look like I'm. Oh, he, he got it in three seconds. No, I got the beginning of the answer in three seconds. I'm still calculating the rest of the answer. And once you say part of your answer, you can quickly forget it. And, you know, because I only have, I don't know, maybe 10 digits of working memory to play with. And that's not a lot. Other tricks that he does on stage include constructing magic squares, mathematical card tricks, and finding the day of the week of a given date. Are starting with this gentleman here. What year was it, if I may? 1973. And what month? September. September, uh, September what? 20th. 20th. Was that a Thursday? Yes. Somebody else. Uh, uh. Art also publishes original math research. His research knowledge has inspired a new trick that he'd like to learn. Here's a trick I'd like to be able to do someday. Um, it's called the Knight's Tour. Now, I can do a basic Knight's Tour. And what, let me explain what that is. If, um, if you take a chessboard and you put a knight anywhere on the board, it's possible to move that knight in such a way that it hits every square on the chessboard exactly once. And I can do that. And there's a nice simple algorithm for doing so. Um, but here's something I'd rather be able to do, which is it's also a mathematical theorem that if you, if you give me any black square and any white square, it's possible, theoretically, and it's been proven, that you can do a, a knight's, I don't I'd call it a tour, a knight's path that covers every square on the chessboard starting at the given black square and ending on the given white square. So that, because that would take an extra degree of sophistication and playing is something that I'd like to be able to do. And I know some people who are good enough at the Knights Tour that they can, but uh, I can't yet. And I, uh, may, maybe were I a high school student now and had the same amount of time that I probably put into my mental calculations in high school, um, I might work hard to achieve this uh, skill. Maybe someday, who knows. Art also encourages others to become mathemagicians. I don't, ha I don't have any claim to this mathemagician territory. If people, other people want to go out and, 
and become junior or senior mathemagicians, I think that's great. So, do you want to be a mathemagician? Uh, 367,809. Yes! Good! Thank you very much!